streams and, and streams of other people, I kind of got a little bit of your story, but I just, you know, for, for people who haven't quite got a clear picture of where crypto coffee came from, can you just give us like, give us, give us the, give us a juice on, you know, did you, were you actually, were you, were you, were you onboarded at Starbucks at some point? Like, how did you get into crypto? How did you get into Richard Hart stuff? You know, why, why did you decide to join the winningest community that ever existed? Good question, sir. Well, it all started in 2015. Um, recently had graduated college as an engineer, ended up at a financial company, you know, the corporate nine to five lifestyle just kind of landed in there because that was the path that you took. Um, and that was the path that everyone around me told me was going to be successful. And I get into this corporate finance job. I see the suits at the top and, you know, they're, they're all dressed up in collars and ties every day and, you know, they're making money, but they're essentially a slave to the system. So from basically the moment I started in the, my corporate life as not an engineer, but in finance, you know, I kind of flip-flopped. I realized, my God, I, I have to get out of here. If I have to spend the next 40 years in this rat race, yeah, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. There's got to be a better way. So I started side hustles of all time, of all kinds. And uh, I, I started looking up just personal finance tips on my own to escape basically to reach financial escape velocity where I wouldn't have to work for another human being anymore. And I don't necessarily do well with like hierarchical structures either. I hate being told what to do. I'm sure a lot of people in the chat feel the same way. You know, you have a boss, he's a piece of shit and they just want you to work long hours for, you know, getting no credit at the end of it. It's not always the best system. Um, I bounced from there to more of a tech bro job. So I was literally a tech bro for five years at an app company. We we were a consultancy that made apps and websites for different Fortune 500 companies. But the whole time mm -hmm. I was doing these, these nine to five rat race gigs, I never looked at it like, you know, my retirement plan. Because I, I basically I was like, there's got to be a better way than working 40 years at a job you either hate or you just kind of hate or you just don't really like that much. It was soul sucking. Even, right? even if you like it, now you got golden handcuffs. It's like it's a lose lose. Yep. And that's what I saw from the people that were older in the uh, in the whole uh, system. They, you know, it seems like nobody really talks normally. <laughs> Everybody uses these words and like this, this vernacular that's almost like business lingo. Nobody really says what they mean in, in corporate life. Everyone's very tiptoeing around people's feelings. I like to get straight to the point. I like to make connections that are either deep or funny. You know, your sense of humor is stifled at these places because you can't you can't even tell a joke without getting, you know, risk of, oh, is this going to offend somebody? And I'm going to send to HR. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I started messing around with trading. So uh, don't do that. I learned that in 2015. I, my intro to crypto is Poloniex. And I was seeing these coins Hello. pump all day yeah. long. Like, oh, this coin's up 30% today. This coin's up 50% today. Maybe if I could just find some way to capitalize on this, if I could predict which ones were going to pump or whatever, I can make overnight millionaire success money. Obviously, that's probably how a lot of people get into crypto, seeing the massive gains and thinking that they could just get in there and get out in a year or two and make millions. And obviously, that does not work. So I learned the hard way that trading doesn't work. I lost somewhere in like the tens of Bitcoins, which at the time, a Bitcoin was like 500 bucks, right? So I would just buy a couple Bitcoin every paycheck and then I would just lose it in the casino of gambling, of, of trading buy a couple more. And I think when I calculated all of it, I must have lost like 30 to 40 Bitcoin, which if I would have held that today, it would have been millions of dollars. But at the oh, time, wow. at the oh, time, wow. you know, it was like a couple thousand dollars. So it wasn't devastating. And I was like, okay, well, I can still, you know, buy myself back into the game with my, my paychecks and whatnot. I started different side hustles along the way. I started a social media marketing agency. Didn't really work. I tried to teach uh, fitness centers how to get more clients. So I understand how marketing works online, like limited time offers and all, all these different tactics. Um, but I tried that and I just wasn't, wasn't the best at sales. And I think in that particular scenario, it was because I hadn't sold myself on what I was selling to other people. Mm -hmm. Unlike Hex, where I'm totally sold myself a long time ago. Like I'm all in. Um, anyway, that didn't work. Uh, other side hustles like website development. I used to make websites for people. Uh, and this would be like after work stuff. And so... The final thing that I tried that failed, and these all failed, by the way, the thing that failed uh, right before I got into Hex was a, an online e-commerce platform called Crypto Coffee. So I mm -hmm. mistakenly thought that people would want to buy things with cryptocurrency, not realizing that they just want to hold this shit because it goes up in price. 
Mm. And they have no interest in selling it whatsoever. So obviously me being technically minded, I went down the rabbit hole. I installed my own like BitPay or what was it? Uh, something BTC BitPay. server. And it wasn't BitPay because I was centralized. I, I made like a self-hosted okay. payment server, um, BTC Pay. And I, I spent so much time with this platform, like using WooCommerce and all these plugins and whatnot. All for nothing, essentially, because I was selling coffee. Basically, I was a, I was a caffeine dealer for a while and <laughs> charging co- you know, money, you know, selling drugs right. on the Internet. What else is crypto for? But uh, no, I'm just kidding. Kidding, guys. Yeah. And don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Or but, if you do, uh, use Monero, but don't do that. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't lose a bunch of money, but I didn't really make any money either. So I would just sell coffee. I had giant crates of coffee in my old uh, apartment. And wow. when, once I got rid of the last like crate, I was like, well, I can't keep doing this because it's not going anywhere. Nobody like the few sales I'm getting is like not worth the time. The juice wasn't worth the squeeze, so to speak. And then mm-hmm. I've been following Richard Hart since 2017, probably around the Roger Ver debate time. I, I don't remember the exact day, but I was always into self-help as well and self-improvement, um, much less today. But at the time I was into all that stuff and it, it can become an addiction guys, self-help and self-improvement can become an addiction. So be careful with that. But Richard Hart was one of the few people I, I was still following, you know, I was like, wow, no one's heard about this guy really yet. He's, he seems to be on the ball with everything, especially related to crypto, but also his life advice. And so he really built my trust and respect at an early age, you know, in the 2017 bubble. Um, plus, you know, after everything crashed, he, he looked even smarter and then, I heard he was coming out with his own coin. So I I knew I had to pay attention to it, whatever that may Mm -hmm. be. And I remember if you guys think waiting for Paul's chain took a long time, it's taken a long time. You guys should see how long we all waited for hacks. We waited about two years from the idea's inception to launch. And people were equally as frustrated, but it it was a little bit different because nobody had sacrificed money up front. So hacks launched as a finished product, which was a little bit different, but we were still all just restless and stuff, but the anticipation was so high for, for me and a, a small group of others at the time, probably like maybe less than a thousand people. But the people that entered the adoption amplifier in the early days were some of the pioneers that really believed in the product, really were sold on Hex. And I knew I was sold as well. Uh, but when people started shit talking it and basically just saying blatant lies about how Hex was a scam in the early days, um, slandering Richard Hart's name all over the place. He was doing his best to defend himself, but it was me and a couple other guys that just really hated, you know, seeing our bags uh, spoken about like that. We wanted to get out there and defend our bags. It was me, Dollar Cross Crypto, RG3, and Hexologist. Those were the OG4 uh, YouTube guys. And then we quickly realized that because we were getting so much attention and, and praise and, you know, encouragement from the community, we were like, wow, okay, there are people here. They do want to hear this side of the story. And so because it was so controversial, it actually helped us in the early days because the community banded together even harder than I think it otherwise would have. So it was almost a blessing in disguise that Hex had so much controversy around it. And I think I made my first YouTube video. Technically, I made my first YouTube video like a couple of days before Hex launched. But that account got banned because I tried to advertise the video. I tried to like put money into it. And they're like, you can't mm-hmm. advertise crypto, man. So I started a new account and I just decided to call that account uh, Crypto Coffee because of a lack of creativity, essentially. <laughs> I was like, well, I've already got this. Uh, I don't know thing. how you could be anything else. You have a very distinct coffee story. Like, I don't know how you could call yourself anything else. Yeah, well, hey, I mean, you know, my name, my regular name is Matt, but call me whatever you want, guys. And uh, basically, we were out there defending our bags. A lot of the community responded positively and then people just started hopping on board. Next thing you know, like Discourse Syndicate was out there. People, they gave the community a way to essentially come on the channel. If they were a little bit scared or timid about getting hopping on YouTube, they would come on the Discourse Syndicate channel, get interviewed, have a circular kind of mm-hmm. uh, hangout session, a virtual hangout session. Hexologist was doing a daily live stream, you know, riling everybody up. I was doing yeah. like educational how-to videos and stuff. And Miguel, yeah, he, we, we've all kind of found our niche and our journey of uh, what we specialize in when it comes to content creation. And to see every, everybody and where they're at now, it's just leaps and bounds better, um, which makes me more confident than ever before, because you should have seen the days when we had 100 views on our channel, you know, or less than 100 views on our channel. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes was, we had to ask ourselves. Five months hey. ago for me, five months ago, I had 100 views. And look, and I was like, you can oh, start with the Hex channel God. today and you can start getting a couple thousand subscribers in a month or two. Whereas for me and for all of us to get our first thousand subs took like six months, you know, so the snowball rolls down the hill a lot faster now because there's so much mass already 
in the ecosystem. So the community has so much mass that I think it's a lot easier to get in there. And a lot of people have, and I see a lot of awesome new, new people coming in, showing their face and making videos about Hex and Pulse Chain and why they're so great, you know, the other side of the ecosystem. So at the same time, the controversy in Hex and Pulse Chain in the early days, in a way, helped us because we became the underdogs, right? And with something to prove, we had a lot more vigor in which we uh, went about promoting Hex and Pulse Chain. And so many other people kind of agree with that. And I think that appeals to a lot of people. A lot of people like being on the winning team um, with something to prove. If everybody agreed, there wouldn't be any opportunity left on the table, right? If everybody agreed that Hex was awesome, well, there wouldn't be nothing left to prove. It'd probably, Hex would probably be $1,000 and we could all go home. We'd all be rich. So we've got this uphill battle of narrative creation to really get out there. We need to use our words. And we see new people coming in, the, in all the time, like yourself, like, uh, you know, Alex and Dipcatcher from Hedron and Maxi, like uh, the, the other guy that I forgot his name. He, he's Maxim. Uh, Maxim. 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 Mm. Maxim uh, the, that, that guy. I just, I see new YouTubers all the time coming in and some of them have really high quality thoughts, ideas, and presentation, you know, great, great microphones, great uh, video cameras. Really, it doesn't take that much. I finally you know? got a great microphone according to chat. Uh, God, I can't. That's one thing I'm a little sensitive about. Anyone talks about, oh, it sounds like you're in a bathroom. I'm like, God, you know how much time and energy I spend in this shit and you're going to talk about my microphone right now? But eventually it did lead me to getting a roadie and now I've heard it sounds much better. So slight yeah. change it, but. The roads are good. If you uh, if you want a mic recommendation, guys, the wireless mics, the Rode Wireless Two, it's a great microphone. I'm using mm -hmm. the Shure SM7B. This is the Joe Rogan mic, 400 bucks, okay. but it's uh, it's worth it because it makes your voice sound all smooth and buttery. Um, Love those yeah. buttery voices. <laughs> Everyone does. So the only thing is you got to be close to it and really, um, you know, about a fist away from it. Anyway, where was I? Yeah. That's the story of Crypto Coffee. And I think uh, it's really blossomed into a thriving ecosystem that, in my opinion, we've already hit critical mass in the community, not yet the world of adoption, but because the community is so uh, large and cohesive and unstoppable, I think it's only a matter of time before Hex and Pulse Chain and you know the, the good stuff it, within that ecosystem tends, uh, will eventually start to dominate all of cryptocurrency, especially in the next bull market.